Welcome to Happy Times and Places with me, Toby Haydock. Hello, I'm Daryl McLean. I'm a voice actor, impressionist, composer and clown stroke daft bugger. My favourite Doctor Who story is The Chase from 1965. Well, greetings. Uh, hello, fact fans. You'll have noticed I've moved position on the sofa. That's because the denizens of Haydock Towers have been for a walk and now they're drying off and trying to have a snooze whilst I talk through episode three of The Chase. And to do that, I'm going to press play in three, two, one. Um, well, yes, welcome. I've moved over. I had a slight technical issue with the previous episode where um, this camera, um, podcast listeners, I have two cameras. Uh, you can see these on video on YouTube if you haven't found them. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm releasing them yet, but that's all part of the excitement of the unfolding text and the developing scenarios of happy times and places. But this just cut out for some reason halfway through and I'd done a lot of I, I know my marks. I've done a lot of acting to camera that is now lost forever. Um, anyway, in checking what had gone wrong, and I still don't know, I did notice I look a bit of a mess. Uh, I, I think perhaps I could have done <laughs> better in certain aspects of my career if I'd been a bit more conscious of my appearance. But who cares? I, I look a bit of a mess, but I'm trying to have fun. Uh, and if there's not a better metaphor for the chase, <laughs> I don't know what. What is? Uh, it's a funny old hybrid, isn't it? Of this, again, they're so jolly. This Tardis crew, which I think under some circumstances might great, but they they invest the whole thing with a lot of fun. Does, that's a great moving camera there from from Martin, and Ian's Ian's got a painful head. Um, so flight through eternity. That's an interesting title. It's full of sort of all-encompassing titles that don't necessarily have anything to do with, um, you know, what's what's going on in the story. The things like the end of tomorrow. Well, you could call any Doctor Who story the end of tomorrow because there's always there's always threat, isn't there? They're always doing a flight through eternity. I mean, that could be a title for Doctor Who itself. Uh, but it's I I like that. It's a bit more mythic than. You know, it goes through phases, doesn't it, Doctor? There's, there's the, the Bidmead era where it's just the name of the planet they're on quite often. Logopolis and Frontios, which I always found a bit bland. I was like, oh, come on, the Hungry Earth's much better than Frontios. But Flight Through Eternity, yeah, I rather like. It's a nice high shot from ambitious Richard Martin, who I'm forgiving for the things that don't work. And I don't know if this works, this funky jazz music. I like Dudley Simpson a lot. He's a legend. Uh, I like shots of the TARDIS in flight, but this is a very early, is it in fact? It is, isn't it? It's the first, this story is the first time we see the TARDIS in flight in the, in that regard. Uh, and there's another cutout thing doing doing the business to make an arresting visual, a cutout Dalek. But I think with, uh, you know, a small 60s telly and, and, and the sort of reception they had then, I think that would have looked fine. It looks okay now. I think the design's brilliant. I love all the, uh, the 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 spinny things on the. I think I think in fact I have a sticker of of that uh, from somebody's Redbubble store because I've got a, I've got a door panel that's looking a bit bland. The panel up to the attic is looking a bit bland and it looks like a bit like a hole because I painted it a dark colour. So I wanted a flash of colour on it, a, a flash of white on it to show that it's uh, it's actually solid rather than that there's a gap in the way to the attic. So. It's on my to-do list, is to put the spinny TARDIS wall control on that. Oh, there's a funny... There's a funny sort of... Is he a dummy Dalek at the back? Somebody will know. Gavin Rymill will have a... He has a various websites and videos where he talks in detail about every Dalek prop. So I'm not even going to compete. Uh, I've asked Gavin to contribute to this podcast... And he's he's preparing a story, not a Dalek story though. But he is the Dalek guy. Ian looks like he's in. <laughs> he looks like he's in uh, episode one of the Mind Robber. Um, gosh, Ian and Barbara in in, but uh, both uh, rocking the old roll neck look there. But yeah, he, Ian looks like Jamie does when he's had his personality taken away from him and he's turned all white in the void of the Mind Robber. 
So I'm sure somebody clever could could chop Ian out of this and, and place them in the white void of the mind robber and, and create uh, some sort of uh, world of fiction uh, an escapade for Ian Chesterton. What's, oh, Barbara's eating. She, Barbara looks like she's vaping because I've got half an eye on this and half an eye on the camera and half an eye on the making sure that the sound is is working. Barbara, that's a very judgery shot of the first state bill. Barbara looks like she's vaping. I've got a feeling they had to find the stock footage of this and find a clean version or something. Something about the the stock footage of this that um, caused a bit of a headache. Or maybe didn't. There's an anecdote. I recall something that might have happened and might not have done, but something has chimed. So this is, we assume, 20th century, modern day, current day, Earth. There's no attempt to make it a period piece. So aside from Planet of Giants, this is the uh, the first sort of contemporary... Um, Do Doctor Who story to do. Oh, I like I like the rather rotund extra <laughs> nudging somebody out of the way. That's a lovely attention to detail. And this is Arnie Gordon, who was a South African actor, but he's decided to, and he's Frostar in the Web Planet. So he spent his previous Doctor Who talking eyes, and now he's playing the tour guide as Columbo in a bus conductor's hat. Uh, <laughs> which I, I kind of like. <laughs> the film looks gloriously cleaned up in this uh, restoration. Uh, 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 so so whatever the thing is I alluded to, that I can't remember that they did the thing very well. Um, I, 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 like, I do like the sort of the, the hats and the specs and the, uh, yeah, the, the sort of costuming policy for, for the tourists who all, who all have their own thing going on. Uh, and all hail Peter Purvis. I love that he's just not Peter Purvis out of the way. I've never really noticed the big guy before. I mean, I knew there was a big guy extra, but I didn't realise he was quite so belligerent. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and the young guy there, I should find out about them. I probably, do you know what I'm probably going to spend my Saturday now doing is looking up those extras and finding out if they're dead. Because <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Oh, dear. <laughs> um i now i this is peter purvis um a, a a doctor who legend and a very nice man uh who i have to say does give it his even the litter has got litter around the litter there's some nice attention to detail here on the empire state building um but yes, this this uh, scene uh, makes it very difficult when you're. I, I remember I was writing something about the war machines for for Doctor Who magazine, and the war machines is you know the first story set in twentieth century modern day Earth, which has become a, a norm. But for the sixties and certainly the Hartnell era was, you know, uh, unusual. But you you can't say that now because there's this segment here which could well be. It's not stated. I don't think, although. He, he he refers to Chai and Brody, doesn't he? So he refers to a, a television programme. But, um, and it's likely, yes, it's likely that it's 20th century Earth, but it's not a sort story set in 20th century Earth. But again, you can't use that shorthand for the war machines anymore, lest somebody say, oh, I think you'll find. So when you've got a limited word count, you have to couch it in various parentheses in order to bat off uh, 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 somebody calling you to order, which means you get to like, write less interesting things about Doctor Who because you, you, you have to, as I say, a lot of the writing of things is, 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 is anticipating complaints um, uh, uh, from people who, who, uh, who, who, who could uh, 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 take you to task or um, be generous and sort of give you the benefit of the doubt and know what you mean. But uh, have you met any Doctor Who fans? Um, <laughs> So the, yeah, so apart from Planet of Giants, which again isn't about being set in the in the modern day, it's about being small. This is our until we get to the war machines. This is our little sojourn into uh, the modern day. And Peter Purvis is great. He's, I mean, 
he's going for it. And thank goodness he is, because otherwise it would, you know, why would we want to spend spend any time with this guy? He's it's basically a, a, a comic interlude with a with a hick. Uh, and I, I can sort of see it's odd, though, to think, isn't it? He comes and does this, you know, very bold comic turn. Three weeks later, he's a regular playing a totally different character. Um and I, I, you sort of say, oh, and they wouldn't do that these days. Freema Adjaman was good in an episode and they liked her and brought her back. Although it was, yeah, there was a break between, there was at least a, a, a season break. But it was the next, you know, it was a couple of episodes later. It was the next story. Um, so perhaps things don't change as much as we, we think they do. Uh, and certainly, you know, luck, but also... Um, capitalizing on that luck he got a nice little part uh and he obviously was nice to work with uh, uh and and he had a batch <laughs> and morton dill i i think is good fun uh, <laughs> it's genuinely funny <laughs> and i think he means it to be you know it's not funny because it's uh, it's you, you know he has pitched it with intent to go where it where it is. <laughs> oh dear, I'm laughing like a lame page on Sunday if I'm not careful. Um, <laughs> and I'm not sure that it, it, it is wise to have somebody laughing at a Dalek. I mean, I, I can see why, <laughs> but that's great, isn't it? You never see a Dalek go, go 360. I think my friend... Peter told me that's the only time you see a Dalek go it's 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 eye stuck go all the way round. Uh it may have done it in the modern series. Uh I've not watched that as much because I've I've had I've had when did I first see this when I was about ten? I've had thirty six years to watch this over and over again. The new series is only fifteen years old. Uh <laughs> uh uh, but actually, the Dalek does look because it's squat and he's tall. Even though he's sending it up, it 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 looks quite scary. But I th I think that this this does two series. Things. One, it shows that that Terry Nation and Dennis Spooner and Richard Martin have kind of gone. Well, we've done the Daleks being scary. What else can we do? Let's have them coughing at sand and l let's have somebody not be scared of them but laugh at them. I know where they're coming from. I, I'm not sure it's I'm not sure it's wise, even though it's very entertaining. And the Dalek held its own by that, really. You know, it was it was inscrutable and it did the thing with the head, but it didn't kill him. Now, you know, it's almost like it's going, he's a comedy character. It would spoil the tone if I killed him. Um, but, and of course, now he's going to get he's going to get committed to an asylum. Um, I mean, no. Ha has he got a? F has that two guy got a fag? He's holding something in his between his fingers. What's he got there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, maybe not. Um, fags in doctor. The, the the fat guy has a cardigan though. <laughs> should I? I should have a checklist, shouldn't I, for fags and cardigans in Doctor Who? <laughs> I just, <laughs> um, I I think I probably know of a fan group who'd refer to themselves as fags and cardigans, but that's a whole different thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I like the break on the Empire State Building, even though I'm not sure I should. It's a guilty pleasure. And should there be any such thing as a guilty pleasure? Because what you're essentially saying is, I like something other people might judge me for liking. That's essentially what you're saying. If you like something, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Just like it and don't apologise. So, yeah, everybody, I like the Empire State Building. I like the fact that the tour guide is a, a Monoptera playing Columbo. <laughs> um, and this is... Uh, and, and again, when I read about this, the punchline to this sequence, you know, that was very exciting to me. The idea that Doctor Who 
could have a conduit to Abraham Lincoln. This was a Doctor Who story that had Abraham Lincoln. It had the Beatles. It solved the mystery of, spoiler alert, I mean, if you're watching this and you haven't watched The Chase yet, stop immediately. Um, it's one of my favourite things in commentaries when somebody goes, can I say anything about this scene or will it spoil it for the viewer? No. You sort of go, no. <laughs> if, if anybody is watching, if listening to the commentary before they've watched the story, they deserve to have it ruined for them. Um, so, folks, this is the Mary Celeste. Um, but, but you know, I had books of, you know, the Piccolo Book of Mysteries, I think. And it was a thing we talked about, you know, at, you, I think, you know, mentioned at school and, and, and you know, around the dinner table, the, the mystery. We loved a mystery, the mystery of the devil's footprints, the, the mystery of the Mary Celeste. Um, and so Doctor Who having the Beatles and Abraham Lincoln and the Mary Celeste, even the Empire State Building was a thing. I know we take stuff for granted now because we could see pictures and we could go places more than we could. The Empire State Building is a, is a, is is an amazing thing. Um, well, did did I read recently somewhere that it's not the Empire State Building? In the, I'm not going to go there. That is Dennis Chinnery, who is Garmin in Genesis of the Daleks. So he comes back and and is far more serious with the Daleks. Um, uh, and he's also Professor Sylvester in The Twin Dilemma. So he's run the whole gamut of Doctor Who. Uh, no longer with us, um, but uh, a nice actor. He's also in that episode of The Prisoner where nobody says anything. Many happy returns. Uh, nobody says anything in English for something like the first 40 minutes. So he and John Lorimore are German gun runners. That's a great idea, isn't it? That, that, that's a really sort of disconnecting idea, that, that episode of The Prisoner where what dialogue there is isn't in the english language until i think the prisoner gets gets home or is it home brilliant i'm not here to talk about the prisoner although i can if i want can't i um uh oh comedy knocking on the head because this this would not be as amusing as it looks um uh although you didn't give it an awful lot of welly there maureen but that's because of health and safety and no stunt doubles um Oh, and we get Ian comedy knocked on the head. <laughs> I'd forgotten. <laughs> I forget we get comedy concussion, which Ian um, William Russell is very good at. He, he's he's. Uh, I'm terribly sorry, poor old hapless Mickey. Oh, William Russell is doing very good comedy concussion there. Um, uh so, yeah, the idea that, that Doctor Who would solve the mystery of the Mary Celeste was one of those things that when you read about it, you went, oh, of course, what a brilliant idea. And it must be the sort of... I imagine them sort of sitting around, you know, the table in the 60s where, you know, smoking pipes and being clever uh, uh, and sort of going, what can we do for the children this week? You know, let's... Well, let's have the TARDIS and the Daleks arrive on the Mary Celeste because that's a you know that's a hot topic oh by the way if you can hear a groaning noise it's not the tardis it's not a maya beast it's a snoring cockapoo called bernard who's back from his walk and sitting where i was before which is why i've uh, changed my position um uh, if you're listening to the podcast you'll just have to imagine it um oh and uh, the captain here is david blake kelly uh, who is also in the smugglers and is also i i still i think it's now been changed on wikipedia sometimes wishfully changed to being uh, David Kelly, the Irish actor who's, you know, Mr. O'Reilly in uh, Faulty Towers and the man from Robin's Nest. Um, David Kelly and David Blake Kelly, both Irish actors, but both different, which is why they have different names uh, and don't look the same. But uh, reference resources on the internet don't necessarily uh, count such things. Patrick Carter only died very a couple of years ago and he was... Uh, he was in Quatermass 2 and I always meant to write to him. He was still turning up in things like London's Burning when I was younger, uh, playing the bosun. Uh, character actor, did loads of stuff. Um, excellent sideburns. Cardigans, fags and sideburns in Doctor Who. I'd love to do a tally of. And again, I probably know a few fan groups that consist of cardigans, fags and sideburns. Ha 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 ha. Um... Uh, Obviously, that water is 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 quite still, although that adds to the mystery, of course. The Mary Celeste was, I think, in still waters. Uh, that's nice. I like the uh, I like the roundy roundy thing turning into a scanner with which is a round shape because the Daleks have roundels and round eyes. 
uh, and there's a bit of bit of spare signal howl around going there that they've thrown in for good measure. I think that looks like a close-up of some of the title sequence tests, but I could be wrong. Um, I was just sent them the other day. Uh, Willoughby Douglas Ditter. Uh, yes, don't know anything about him. It's a good name though, isn't it? Douglas Ditter. Uh, yeah, why don't I know anything about Douglas Ditter? I presume I've looked him up and tried to find him and forgotten. I'm presuming he's probably no longer with us, otherwise he'd be on my list of people that I don't think are no longer with us that I've never found. Uh, but I can't recall offhand. Um, uh, and of course, then we go into a, f a film sequence, uh, which is which is rather impressive with uh, all of this uh, stuntage. Although I, again, for, for something that is effectively in place is a comedy sequence, and considering we know what happens, that that's a woman with a baby who's falling into the sea and is going to die. I I, I think perhaps... Uh, oh, that's an excellent stunt there, though, and a nicely shot from above. That's a, that's really well done. Um, so all, all the actors have had to come to, to be on film. But I, I do question the comedy value of uh, a woman and baby perishing at sea. I mean, call me old-fashioned. Um... <laughs> They're, it's interesting that the Daleks are quite reluctant to exterminate people in 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 this episode. They just sort of allow people to to jump to their own deaths, or in the case of Peter Purvis, um, do a comedy sequence. Um, I, I like the way he takes his hat and jacket off. He's like the captain. Everyone else panics a bit and either falls in or jumps in. Uh, but he, because he's the captain, he takes his hat and his jacket off to at least do the escape with some sort of formality. I think that's a, a nice touch from the actor. Um, and, 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 but we, we basically there have mass death played for... Well, is it played for... The actors don't really play it for comedy. But I, I, think, the, I think the story wants us to find it quite funny. Um, Jack Pitt, uh, who we at last get to see, he's he's been a, a venom grub, and I think he's a gubbage cone later on. <laughs> Names to conjure on your CV, uh, but uh, and he was a sort of prenner. There is an interview with him on uh, 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 Keith Mythmakers did an interview with him, which I was very pleased about because uh, he'd never been interviewed in Doc Two magazine and stuff like that, and they found him and dug him out and. Uh, uh, and he recalled, I think, he, he recalled sharing digs, I think, with Hartnell. Um, uh, and and it's nice. Oh, there's a broken Dalek. It's, Dalek's got a broken bit on it there. They're starting to go through the wars. But yes, it's it's nice that Jack Pitt, having been a monster, gets a, a his his face in shot, even if it's just we don't quite know why there's a a, a lagging cabin boy who who gets to jump off off camera, not even on film, but. Um, it just adds a little coda to this scene, and this is actually quite creepy with the 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 the, the picture, you know, fading between shot, and now you can hear the, you know, the, the the rope, and you've got the silence. That's very atmospheric, and the reason for that is because and the untouched meal, um, and the reason for that is oh no, that's not an untouched meal, but we did see one earlier, uh, is because. We are on a boat called the Mary Celeste. We still haven't got there yet. As I'm talking, I keep waiting for them to show the, the Mary Celeste. I remember being quite surprised when I saw that because I thought it was M-A-R-I-E. I still think it might be, uh, but I could be wrong on that. Uh, I, it might be spelt two different ways. Look it up. I don't have all the answers, but I remember certainly thinking, oh, have they spelt that wrong? And I think I then did look it up and... And, and I think it, it's OK to be either. I don't know. Look it up if this inspires you to read about the mystery of the Mary Celeste. Mary Celeste. Yeah, Mary Celeste. Uh, but I like that. It's like Pudding Lane. Uh, it's like the explanation for why crows say doctor. Um, is there anything that that sort of intrudes into our real world or, or, or has a cheeky wink at a, a mystery that we have. I, I quite, I rather like, uh, it, it makes, 
makes makes Doctor Who seem Im important. Although when Doctor Who's too important, I don't like it. I don't want him to be a legend thread through time. I want the Doctor, him or her, uh, them to be. Uh, 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 I want them to be a, a plucky amateur that just happens to save the universe uh, through wits and a good nature and uh, reading a lot. Um, Journey into Terror again. That's one of those all-encompassing uh, episode titles coming next. <laughs> they might call it. Stuff happens in space and time. Oh, top billing to Arn Gordon there, because uh, it's uh, order of speaking. Um, I th uh, I wonder if David Blake Kelly got a credit in the Radio Times. I don't know if he got a. Um, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Only I will care. Um, but I might go and look that up now. Um, uh, that was jolly. So it was Empire State Building and Mary Celeste. Uh, oh. What is, what is Daryl going to choose? I, I, forget, I keep forgetting I've got to choose something. Uh, so I have to pause the video first. It's not a video. It's a DVD. I will say video till the day I die. <laughs> um, so now that I have cessated the cassette, uh, uh, what, what has Daryl chosen? I've got to choose something before Daryl chose, chooses which is good because it buys me time to find him. Uh, I've got to... It, surely it's got to be... Now, he's not choosing specific things from episodes, I don't think. Uh, so he might just choose the sort of general comedy feel or something. Um, what did I... I think Peter Purvis, I think the fact that he, he entered that with such gusto and, got, and did enough to get cast in a regular three weeks later is a testament to an actor who I think had been out of work for a bit and he'd been turned down... He'd auditioned for the Web Planet and hadn't got the part. So I think the lesson there is, you know, a disappointment might lead to something else that ultimately leads to a better part. And if you are, you know, an artist, a performer, whatever you want to call them, we don't have to be so highfalutin as to say artist, a creator, a turn, a vagabond, a strolling player, uh, somebody who just wants to make stuff. Uh, it can be hard and it can be full of disappointment. But Peter Purvis audition for a role for a director he didn't get the role he was spared having to be trussed up in a harness and flown over uh, the studios dressed as a space moth and instead comes back a few weeks later to play a stupid hillbilly and probably went, oh it's only one episode i could have been in three episodes as the space moth but then it leads to him being a regular and and it leads to the fact that still to this day you know, people talk to him and he's very gracious and uh, happy to talk about Doctor Who and it's still a big part of his life. So I like that. And so I'm not just picking his performance. I'm picking the story of what got Peter Purvis to there and the flight through eternity that it took him on that reaches us to now and beyond. Uh, what does Daryl say? Reason number three. Go right, I'm three. But I love the chase. Is its light entertainmentness, its variety, it's a sketch show. There's no other Doctor Who story quite like this. Now, obviously, Terry Nation um, came from a comedy writing background more so than a sci-fi writing background. That was kind of a side thing that got out of hand. And he really tries it on in the chase to just make it a comedy show full of sketches. There's the stuff on the time space visualizer. There's all, you know, the episodes later on, The Haunted House, The Skyscraper, The Marie Celeste. It's very sketchy and there's something refreshing about The Chase, which is as refreshing as watching a sketch show. You get all these things and it's just trying to delight you and, and make you laugh. I mean, it's not funny. It's not really <laughs> funny on purpose at any point, sad to say. I, I don't think there's any, maybe The Thick Dalek is quite funny, but it has the same energy as a comedy program and I love it for that. <laughs> I nearly chose the comedy, didn't I? But I got distracted. I went to the comedy of Peter Purvis and then it metamorphosed into his story. So I like to think Daryl and I did slightly have contact for a moment there. And I love the fact that's so forgiving as well. It's not very funny. And yet it has, it's trying. Uh, and um, people might say, well, you'll have a lot of sympathy with that, Toby. Um, uh and and it's it's making me you know very kindly disposed towards it actually because and it's funny isn't it when people get annoyed with comedians or are rude to comedians on twitter or use the the, the any your, anybody that puts 
says so-called comedian or comedian inverted commas when talking to somebody who is an actual comedian um it's is an automatic sin bin for me um uh because actually they're trying to be funny and using a, an old and uh, easily dismantleable trope um but but anybody that you know reserves their ire for somebody that's trying to make you laugh i mean even if they fail you know the intention at least they're trying to make you laugh they're not trying to bump into you uh, like a, a rotund extra on the empire state building they're not trying to nick your wallet they're trying to entertain and if they fail well at least their intentions are pure which you know is is all that this is about uh, having a bash to lighten your day and and uh, uh, and make you connect with the things that you like about doctor who the good things the not very the not very funny things the not very funny times and places of doctor who uh, we'll go to another one of those next time but for now thanks for watching and listening I think you'll find. 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 Not for the first time on this commentary, I would like to point out that the Gavin Rymill Dalek Design website I mention is actually the work of both Gavin and John Green, who founded the website. It's called Dalek 6388. It's a fantastic piece of work. I urge you to go and check it out. I always look forward to having a look at it and finding out the brilliant things they have to say about a Doctor Who story. I look forward to it almost as much as I look forward to a release of one of these podcasts that postdates the time I was pointed out the oversight of missing John's name out. So John, 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 I will say your name a lot. Uh, to come. He's been very, very nice about it. Uh, I'm just pointing it out. I'd also like to point out that David Blake Kelly, guest star of The Chase, episode three, is not given special billing in the Radio Times, but he is mentioned in the publicity that went out about the story. So I knew somebody had flagged him up somewhere, if it's nowhere anybody has actually seen in about 50 years. But it's important to me. Okie dokie, uh, that's enough of clearing things up. Uh, I shall leave you to the rest of your day. Thanks for listening and ta-ta. Thank you so much for listening to Happy Times and Places, which is presented by me, Toby Haydock, and my special guest is Daryl McLean. I'd like to thank this episode's featured patrons who are Ruben Herfindahl, Rob Leonard, Stephen Moffat, Richard Straw, Jenny at Blue Box 99, Paul Cook, Rob Dawson, John Deere, Chris Dunford Kelk, Siobhan Galichon, Ian Key, Joe Llewellyn, Darren Mackay, Stewie the Bunce, David Matthewman, Stuart Mitchell, Nathan Moore, Melvin Pena, Keith Perry, Dylan Rees, John Rivers, Keith Say, Len Stewart, Nick Temple, Reynard Toombs, Apollo C. Vermouth, Gary Wales, Adam Westwood, Rich Wiggins, Michael Williams, and Stephen White. The music for this podcast is specially composed by Dave Gates, and the podcast artwork is by Dylan Patterson. If you would like to be a patron, please sign up at patreon.com forward slash Toby Haydock. You get advanced releases and exclusive content. Or you could do a one-off payment at ko-fi.com forward slash Toby Haydock. If you cannot or do not wish to contribute financially, that's perfectly understandable, please do go to all your podcast outlets and rate these five stars and review them positively because that really, really does help. Thank you. You can follow these podcasts on Twitter, Haydoke, H-A-D-O-K-E, podcasts, Haydoke podcasts, and there's more information at my website, www.tobyhaydoke.com. And you can see my stand-up comedy show, Excess Malarkey, on Twitch, Excess Malarkey, every Tuesday at 8pm, where I have special comedy guests from around the world.